Hello, my name is Magnus Peterson. This is my fourth tutorial on TensorFlow. This is about saving and restoring the variables of a neural network. This tutorial builds on the previous tutorials, so I recommend that you see those first. I will just briefly go over the parts of the notebook that are similar to the other tutorials. So here we have a flowchart of the convolutional neural network that we are using. We have an input image, then the first convolutional layer, and the second convolutional layer, and then we have a fully connected layer, and then we have a classification layer. So we want to save all the variables for this convolutional neural network. So this means all the filter weights in the first convolutional layer and all the filter weights in the second convolutional layer. And then we have all the weights and biases for the fully connected layers. And then we want to retrieve or reload those variables later. So here we have all the necessary imports and we will use pretty tensor again because it's a lot easier to define the neural network using pretty tensor instead of doing it directly in tensorflow so once again we load the mnist data set and the training set contains 55,000 images the test set contains 10,000 images and the validation set contains 5,000. and in this tutorial we will actually use the validation set and i will show you how below so here we have the usual helper function for plotting images and let us plot a few images from the test set so we see that it looks correct. Now let us move on to creating the TensorFlow computational graph. And first we have the placeholder variable for the input images and we call this X. And this is explained much better in the previous tutorial so I won't do that again. And we have to reshape X into a four dimensional tensor so it can be input to the convolutional layers. And then we have another placeholder variable for the true class labels so these are 10 dimensional vectors. And again, this is explained much better in the previous tutorials. So now let us define the convolutional neural network. And when we use pretty tensor, it is quite simple. First, we have to wrap the input tensor, which is the placeholder variable X image that we defined above. And then we create the network like this. We say that each of our layers, we want to have the rectified linear unit as the activation function. And then we have the first convolutional layer, the max pooling, second convolutional layer, max pooling again. Then we have to flatten it so we can input it to a fully connected layer. And finally, we have the softmax classifier. And out of this, we get the predicted class as a 10 dimensional vector for each image. And we get a loss function, which we can optimize. We need this little helper function so we can get the weights of the variables so we can plot them later on. So here we set our optimization method to the so-called ADAM optimizer and we wanted to minimize the loss function that we got from constructing the neural network using pretty tensor above. So let's have a look. This one here. So now we finally get to the point where we create the so-called saver object and this is tf.train.saver and we just store a reference to it like this. And we want to save our so-called checkpoints in this path. And if this directory doesn't exist, then an exception will be raised. So when you run this notebook, you have to create this directory yourself. Note that we are not saving or loading anything now. We will do that later. So now that we have created the entire computational graph for TensorFlow, we have to create the session where we can actually execute this graph. So we do that here. And now we have to initialize all the variables. So these are all the filter weights for the convolutional layers and the weights and biases for the fully connected layer and so on. And we create a little helper function for doing that because we want to call it again below. And we are now ready to optimize the variables. We use a helper function for this optimization. And instead of using the entire training set of 55,000 images on each iteration, we use a smaller batch with only 64 images. In this tutorial, we also do something called early stubbing, which means that we keep track of the classification accuracy on the validation set. And when it hasn't improved for 1000 iterations, we abort the optimization. So we need a few helper variables for doing this. We need to keep track of the best validation accuracy that we have seen so far. And we started with the lowest possible number, which is 0, 0.0 or 0%. And then we have the iteration number for the, when the last improvement was seen. So the helper function for doing the optimization looks like this. And we have just added a few things. So inside this function, we perform a number of iterations and we have to keep track of how many we have performed so far because we might call this function several times. 
So in each iteration, we get a new batch from the training set. X batch is the images and Y true batch is the true classification labels. And then we create a so-called feed dict using this batch. And then we run the optimizer that we defined above and we print the status every 100 iterations and also after the final iteration. So when we print the status, we first calculate the classification accuracy on the small training batch. And then we calculate the classification accuracy on the 5,000 images in the validation set. And this takes considerably longer. And then we test if the accuracy on the validation set has improved over the best known. And if it has, then we improve the best known and we set the iteration for the last improvement to the current iteration. And then we do this. We save all the variables of the TensorFlow graph. So in this line here, we save all the filter weights and the bias values for the both of the convolutional layers and the fully connected layers and so on. All of this gets saved in this line here. And then we print a status message with the classification accuracies and whether or not the validation accuracy had improved. After this, we test whether we have found an improvement to the validation accuracy in the required number of iterations. And if we haven't found an improvement, then we break from the for loop. So we don't perform any more optimization iterations. And finally, we print the time usage. Here we have a helper function for plotting example errors. So this is misclassified images. And this is just the same as in the previous tutorial. And here we have some helper functions for calculating the classifications and the accuracies and so on. And these functions are slightly different than previously because we need to calculate it for both the test set and the validation set. But you can read the source code and it is well documented. So let us move on to the results. And we first print the classification accuracy on the test set before we have done any optimization. So this is just with random convolutional weights and fully connected weights and biases and all that. And here we have an classification accuracy of about 8.1%. So this means that we are doing a random guess and it is usually quite bad as we only guess correct in about 8% of all the images in the test set. And this is what the random convolutional weights in the first layer looks like. So now let's perform 10,000 optimization iterations. And this is slightly different than the previous tutorials. Now we print the iteration number and we print the classification accuracy on the small training batch. And then we print the classification accuracy on the validation set. And we have this small star or asterisk out here. This indicates that the accuracy has improved on the validation set. So we asked to perform 10,000 optimization iterations, but at the same time, you will remember that we are going to abort the optimization if we haven't found an improvement to the validation accuracy in 1,000 iterations. So let's ha have a look how many we actually performed. And let's see, we performed 6,300 iterations. And this is because the last improvement to the validation accuracy was found in iteration 5,300. Since then, we didn't find any improvement, so we aborted the optimization. And also remember that we have saved all the variables for the computational graph, so all the convolutional filters and weights and biases and all that has been saved for this iteration here for the best validation accuracy. And we will use those in a moment. So let's print the test accuracy. And it is important to understand that we are using convolutional filters and weights and biases and so forth that have actually been optimized for a thousand iterations more than the ones that we have saved in the file on disk. So the accuracy on the test set is 98.2%. And here are some of the example errors. So this is supposed to be an eight, but the network has predicted it to be a three. And this is supposed to be a six, but the network predicted that it's a zero and so on. And now let's show the convolutional filters or weights for the first convolutional layer. So they look like this. And you have to compare these to the ones that were initialized with random values, which we showed above. So it's a little difficult to see that by going back and forth on the screen. So what I did was I right clicked and I saved the image and I have already done that. So let's have a look. And here we have the convolutional weights or filters when they were initialized with random values. And, and here we have them when they were optimized after several thousand iterations. So these are quite similar. 
And I will just switch back and forth a few times. And if you look, for example, here, you will see that there's a slight change. But it is actually quite interesting that the filters are so similar when they have been optimized. And I encourage you to consider why that might be. So let's go back to the notebook. And another way to see that the filters are actually different is to consider the mean and standard deviation. So the mean is 0.03417. And if we go back and look at the filters when they were completely random, the mean is only 0.01626. So they are different, but they are quite similar. And this is quite interesting, actually. So now let's try and initialize the variables again. So we call the helper function from above, which randomly initializes all the variables in the computational graph. Then let's print the test accuracy again. So now it's back down to nine and a half percent. So these are random guesses. And sometimes it guesses right, but usually it guesses wrong about what the images show. And now we can show the convolutional weights of the filters again. So now we are going to use the saver object to restore the best variables that we saved during the optimization. So we simply execute this line here, saver.restore with a TensorFlow session and the save path as the arguments. And then we calculate the classification accuracy on the test set again. And now it's 98.7. So this is actually quite a bit better than before. And remember that the variables that we just reloaded were the ones that were saved at iteration 5300, whereas the variables that we used previously to show the classification accuracy on the test set were the ones that had been optimized for another thousand iterations. So now we have a classification accuracy of 98.7%, whereas the accuracy was only 98.2% or something like that if we had optimized for another thousand iterations. This is somewhat random. And if you execute the entire notebook again, you might get the opposite results. But what happens sometimes is that you have a neural network and if you train it for too long, then it is said to overfit on the training data so that it starts to learn the noise of the training data so that when you give it new images, it will think that the noise was actually correct and then it will misclassify new images. So if you have a problem with overfitting, what we have done here is a good idea to try and avoid that, which means that we test continuously on the validation set. And then we use the variables and convolutional filters and all that that perform the best on the validation set. So we can plot the convolutional filters again, and they should look quite similar to the ones we had above before we reinitialize the weights. So we have showed how to save and load the variables of a neural network in TensorFlow. And this is very easy. It's just a few lines of code. And we can use this in different ways. For example, if you want to use a neural network without having to train it all the time, then you can save all the variables and then you can just reload the variables whenever you need to use the neural network again. Another use is if you have very large neural networks and they take many days to train, then you can save the checkpoints at regular in intervals so that if your computer crashes or something else happens, then you can reload a checkpoint that works and then you can restart the optimization from that point instead of having to waste several days by starting the optimization from the beginning again. And this tutorial also showed how to use so-called early stopping, which is useful if you have a neural network that has a tendency to overfit on the training data. So we monitor the classification accuracy on the validation set. And when we haven't seen an improvement in, for example, a thousand iterations, then we abort the optimization. And then we use the variables that gave the best performance on the validation set to classify future images. We can also take a quick look at the files that we have saved. So I call it best validation and put it in this folder here. And it is about 2.8 megabytes. And then TensorFlow stores some other data, which it uses to keep track of the checkpoints. And we can use this command in Linux called xsd, which shows the binary content of a file. And this is what the checkpoint looks like. So this looks like perhaps some variable names or names of the layers, or maybe some notes to the computational graph that Pretty Tensor has added. And we can't really see what this file contains. It's not human readable. So it's only something that TensorFlow can write and read. 